residual fibrous area in the insertion area. Now the polyp, which is completely detached, is caught with grasping forceps and with a twisting movement, it is completely detached and then brought outside the cervical channel through the external sheath of the instrument. This operation has been carried out in real time, so we can see it only lasts a few minutes. The case that we are going to observe relates to a 38-year-old patient who has been suffering from menometroragia for over a year. The combined hysteroscopic and echographic diagnosis shows the presence of an undermucous myoma, G2, of around 3 cm at the level of the back uterine wall. The patient undergoes a combined myomectomy both with the resectoscopic technique and by using mechanical instruments in the operating channel. Now we see the image of the myoma. As we can see, it is the myoma G2, which occupies the majority of the back uterine wall. It is initially attacked with the curved electrode of the resectoscope. We see how the first fragments of myoma are extracted in order to be able to reduce the intracavitary portion itself of the myoma. We saw that the intramural cleavage plane of the myoma is beginning to take shape. Here we see another completion of the extraction of the neoformations fragments at intracavitary level. Here is an additional definition, identification of the cleavage plane. At this point, the surface of the myoma must be leveled with the surface of the uterine wall. Now we see that by using the dissector, the dissecting forceps of the operating system, the enucleation of the intramural portion of the myoma has begun by peeling basically at the level of its pseudocapsule. We can observe that the mechanical action of this instrument is very similar to the action of the resectoscopic cold loops. In addition, it provides the advantage that the myoma can be basically taken with the clamps of the instrument and that a certain strength and a certain traction can be applied in the direction of the uterine cavity itself. We observe how the entire intramural part of the myoma protrudes and starts to occupy almost the entire uterine cavity. This mechanical action is carried out continuously and now we see that almost the entire neoformation is situated inside the cavity. At this point, we will be able to see it is necessary to complete an electrical resection of the myoma by introducing the resectoscopic element. Reintroducendo l'elemento resectoscopico. 
The new part found in the myoma's cavity is removed. We observe how the myoma itself is attacked on the sides with the electrical resectoscope. It is reduced further and at this point we see that a nucleus of the myoma remains. It was not possible to detach this small area of the myoma mechanically, so in this case we can proceed with very sharp strong scissors. We can see that they can fairly easily section even the myoma's tissue. The last fragment of the myoma is sectioned and then completely extracted. This case relates to a 47-year-old patient who has been suffering from hypomenorrhea and dysmenorrhea for over one year. The hysteroscopic diagnosis shows an intracavitary myoma G0 of around 2 cm. If we look at the image, we can see that the myoma starts on the left anterolateral side and occupies the majority of the uterine cavity. This operation has been carried out exclusively with mechanical instruments, without using electricity, a resectoscope or mono or bipolar electrodes. We observed the introduction of the mezzoboom type scissors and here, the sectioning of the myoma's base begins. We can observe how the cutting ability of the scissors is precise and how it is possible to gradually section the base of the myoma from its pseudocapsule. Traction can also be used by opening the scissors in order to detach the base of the growth from the uterine wall and then section safely. We observe how the myoma is progressively almost entirely detached from the wall. The myoma is now almost completely free in the cavity and is bound to its pseudocapsule only by fine tissues. The sectioning is completed. This technique represents a clear advantage since the operation has been carried out with a paracervical anesthesia so the patient was awake in a few minutes. It was not necessary to use electricity, so it was not traumatic for the patient. At this point, the traumatic forceps are inserted. The 
cerca di afferrare saldamente il mioma. There is an attempt to firmly grab the myoma through rotation. Detach the fine tissues which are keeping it bound to the pseudo capsule and extract it progressively through the cervical channel. In this image, we can see that the myoma has been extracted completely. Il caso è relativo. The case relates to a 35-year-old patient with hypomenorrhea who also suffers from primary sterility. The hysteroscopic diagnosis shows a myoma G0-G1 around 2 cm in size, situated in the left tubal recess. If we look at the image, we can see the myoma situated entirely in the recess, plus another very small myoma in the back wall. In this case, the extraction of the myoma is started with the resectoscope so that the entire intracavitary part of the myoma itself is reduced. We can see how the sectioning is being carried out with the electrical loop in order not to damage the endometrial surface and the uterine wall. The electrical resection is carried out as long as possible. This intracavitary fragment is also removed. The myoma is reduced up to nearly as far as the endometrial surface. In this case, we observe how the small cleavage plane of the myoma itself is identified. Due to the sensitivity of the sectioning of the myoma, it was considered necessary to operate with cold loops and grasping forceps of the operating system so that there is no excavation directly in the cleavage plane since this is situated in an area whose endometrial thickness is very fine and to try and extract the myoma by twisting movements with the instrument and to completely enucleate the entire remaining portion of the myoma itself. We observe how these tractions are being carried out and we see that the remaining myoma is gradually taken inside the uterine cavity and is then extracted through the cervical channel.